Hello, hello. Good hello. evening. Hi, good evening. How are you? I am so sad. I know. <laughs> no. I know. I don't know what. Yeah, it's weird. We'll try to fix it. I'll continue. I'll continue helping you over what uh over in WhatsApp later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure we can fix it. Okay. Thank you so much for joining today, everyone. We are almost done with this module. We just have two more days of this module. And today we are going to be talking about the past. We're gonna talk about referencing the past. And we have a couple of exercises that we're gonna be completing. Um, we have some platform exercises. I know that some people have been reaching out uh, in regards to the final test. So I've been trying to help you uh, separately over WhatsApp um, because we are going to be reviewing the final test until Thursday. So if you are already doing the final test and you want or you need help with anything, um, please feel free to reach out to WhatsApp and I'll try to help you. Um, and otherwise, you can wait until Thursday where we cover the final exam. Alrighty. I would just like to confirm if you can hear me well, if uh, my audio is not chopping, if you can hear me well. Yes, teacher, I can hear you. All right, cool. Good, good, good. That's good. All righty. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen to our agenda for today. I see that we are seven people already. So thank you so much for joining. Good evening. As you can see, and I was telling you about, we're going to be reviewing the past tense. And with the past tense, there come some categories about the past and the way that we can do the past. I'm sure that you already know how to do the simple past, and we will be covering some more information on this tense. Um, and for today, for practice, I want to start today's class before we go into the past and before we talk about the exercises and any of that, I would like to take a moment and um, so that we can watch a video. We're gonna be watching a video about accents. We're gonna be reviewing the different accents in the United States. This okay. is a good practice. Okay. Yep, this is a great practice because um, as, uh, as you learn, you will hear many different accents and especially um, there are very differentiated accents in Europe and the United States, right? But imagine that there are a lot of different accents in one country, like in the United States. So there are many, many more out in the world, like, uh, the accent from Australia, maybe a British accent, um, a German accent, people, uh, French people, German people, when they speak in English, they have a very specific accent, right? So today we're gonna be talking about um, the United States accents. So there are 50 states in the United States and some of them have a very, very um, recognizable accent. And some others is the more regular accent that we hear in movies and all of that. So let me share my audio. And we will start today's class by watching this video and reviewing their accents. I never thought I had an accent, but everyone else told me I did. So I never really understood. Can you hear the audio and can you see the video? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, yes right. perfectly. 
cool. Thank you. I never thought I had an accent, but everyone else told me I did. So I never really understood my accent. But we say soda pop, and that was weird, I guess. The great thing about Oklahoma is it's really this confluence of a whole bunch of different parts of the country. So the, the northern part of the state is really like the plains, so people kind of have that flat Iowa accent. People always know I'm from the Midwest when I say bagel. But if you get down south to the Little Dixie portion, it has a much more of a southern drawl. Elongating those vowels a little bit. And saying y'all every sentence. How y'all doing today? Y'all want to go to Waffle House? Come on over, we'll go to Waffle House. It's just like real round in your mouth, and you're just like, hey y'all, how we doing tonight? Um, are you guys going to go down to the game this weekend? I'm so excited. Like Joshua's doing real great this year. Everybody talks really slow, especially compared to New Yorkers. Most New Yorkers are loud. You got to fit your way into a conversation most often times when you're in New York. Vermont's accent is uh, very unique and it's hard to slip into unless you're talking to another person who like grew up farming but the phrase that I can say in my accent is always oh sure bud oh sure. People from California kind of have like they say like Colorado doesn't really have a typical accent. Lots of people say that it has no accent, but you'll definitely get called out if you say Colorado. It's Colorado. So I've been told from people in New York that my state has an accent. Some people go Chicago. I don't think we do. There's parts that I can hear like a little bit of a twang and kind of sound like this. Some people in New Mexico have accents, depending on what part of the state you're from. People in the South tend to sound a little bit more like they could be from Texas. Really wide syllables, really kind of drawn out phrases. It's a little sing-songy, like a little bit valley girl almost. I'm from New Mexico and I love eating burritos. You wanna go skiing up on mountain? Pass me those taters. <laughs> I don't know, I mean like there's cowboys. You know, there's horses. I don't know, because I don't feel like I have an accent. I went home a couple of years ago and was watching home videos of my sister and I, and we had to like do a weather forecast as like little kids, and we'd be like, there's a big hurricane coming from the, the left coast, but don't worry, because we don't know that it's coming. And people would be like, what are you saying? I can put on the, you gotta park the car and hop the yacht and give the god a quarter for some chowder. That's a standard Boston accent right there. Any E-R would have an A-H at the end. It's kind of like, Boston, but cooler and a bit more drunk. Like, we gotta go up to Baja, but I get some lobster supper. My mom has this kind of strange, half French Canadian, half Boston accent that sounds like peanut characters. Womp womp. Oh, if you're from North Dakota, you've got some long O's. Oh yeah, you betcha. Yeah, hang on to your R's a little too. It gets a little bit thicker the older you are. Your grandma sounds a little bit like this. Your mom might be a little bit softer. I'm from Wisconsin. Go pack, go. It kind of gets like up here. Go pack. I say big. I have some eggs and a big. The best example of the Wyoming accent I feel like I've ever seen was in Brokeback Mountain. One curve in the road and they missed it. So if you live in Washington State, no one ever says they have an accent. They all think they speak pretty normal, which is kind of true. Just kind of middle of the road. Sort of like Delaware itself. But they also kind of have like a country hit kind of thing to them. So they'll say like, Washington, Like I'm gonna wash my hands and you're like, Wersh? What kind of a word is that? We pronounce our T's as D, so we say like Connecticut instead of Connecticut. I feel like Michigan's typical accent um, is very nasally. Hi, like that type of vibe. So if I'm from like Northside Kauai, I'm going to sound something like this. People say that us Marylanders have accents, but I don't think we have an accent. Idaho doesn't have a really distinct accent. There's no accent in Indiana. This might be very biased, but I don't think we, I really don't think we have an accent. I don't hear it but I get reminded of it when I travel. I mean, I, I think this is normal. It's a perfect neutral Pacific Northwest tone. Sarah Palin does not have a typical Alaska accent. She's not really from there. She grew up in, I don't know, Kansas or something. My husband laughs at me because I say wolf instead of wolf. Our accents are all over the place. The first one that comes to my head is a Latino one. Me voy a coger un cortadito. There's the St. Louis accent where we say certain things like, Waters and water. Where I'm from, they like to say Haina or Mayan. That shirt over there is Mayan. From Philly, they like to say Wooder and use guys. But in Pittsburgh, instead of use guys, they say yins. What are yins doing? 
North Carolina is is it's it's an interesting accent. It's just got a little bit of a draw. It's a little lazier. Just very slow pace, very good, very nice. There's Charles in South Carolina, which is more like this. It's more smooth. Might have a daughter named Darcy. And then you got the real squealy, squealy southern accent. And then you just got the very just, hey, how you doing? God bless. You have a good day now. All right. We reviewed a bunch of accents, right? All of the US states. Have you ever watched this video before? Or is this the first time? For me, the first time. The first time. It's my first time, too. And what do you think about the video? The, were you able to understand all of the accents? Do you want to watch it again? Um, do you have any comments? Any, any particular accent that was difficult? I heard some, one word that I don't really know what it means. It's like they say they sound like draw or draw. I don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh Like they're what drawing. It's, 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 uh -huh. it's a draw. Oh, draw like, the word. Draw? Oh. Right? Ah, so like, draw the word. Um. Okay. <laughs> and in this example, that's an excellent, um, excellent example. Here, drawing the words doesn't mean dibujarlas, right? Mm -hmm. But it means mm -hmm. to, it means kind of like dragging. <laughs> So they pronounce draw, but they mean dragging. Arrastrar las palabras. So kind of like drawing. They say dragging. drawing, but they mean dragging, dragging, right? There is another accent for us. <laughs> yep, another accent for us. And, what and other you know, words? So what, you know, what other Alejandra? words? You know, the video is uh, about the accent is good, but about the watch, the the video is not good because that is a uh, delay. In my case, I prefer just listen because if I watch and try listen, it's a complicated because it's, it's a delay. About the people talk, hello, in after it's finished before, before I finish the talk that the guys and after finish the, the um, sound. So the video has a oh, delay? Oh, 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 I don't know, it's just in my case. Uh, is, is, is everyone's video showing a delay? Uh, like is the audio finishing after the video or vice versa? Or did you have no problems with it? Mm -hmm. I didn't notice that, so <laughs> I don't know. All right, so no problems there. Anyone else? Did anyone experience any delay with the video and the audio? Any problems? Oh, in my case, no. But oh. all right, so I, I think it might be a you <laughs> thing, Alexander. <laughs> No, I need my a new computer. Ah, no, no, no. no but it's okay. All right. Okay. All right, but we can always watch it again if a lot of you want to watch it again. Does anyone else want to go over it once again, or are we good with that one? For me, it's good. It's good. All right. Yes, teacher. All right. Again? Again? <laughs> I see 17 people. I think we're 17 <laughs> people right now. So what does, what do you, what do y'all, what do y'all want to do? Um, what do y'all want to do? Do you want to watch it again or do you want to discuss it? We can talk about it. Maybe one more time if we are going to discuss it again, or I don't know if it's going to be after we watch the video again, we can discuss. Maybe yes. one can hear everything or and we can catch out more more words because the one that I the only one that I got was for draw dragging. 
that and, is the one that they say a lot. But, and, and please watch the video, watch the video, because I don't just I have a problem with that delay about that. What the people all right. talk and the sound, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. We'll review the video. Uh, for me, it's playing fine. So please let me know if there is a delay with the video. And also, um, every person in the video is talking about a different thing, right? This is not a conversation. They are talking or giving an example about how they talk in their state. So it doesn't really follow a conversation, all right? So yes. after we watch the video again, we can go over the accent maybe that you had the most, um, that you found the most difficult, the one that you liked the most, or the one that um, just was the most interesting to you, All right? So let's watch it again and then we'll discuss. I never thought I had an accent, but everyone else told me I did. So I never really understood my accent. But we say soda pop, and that was weird, I guess. The great thing about Oklahoma is it's really this confluence of a whole bunch of different parts of the country. So the, the northern part of the state is really like the plains, so people kind of have that flat Iowa accent. People always know I'm from the Midwest when I say bagel. But if you get down south to the Little Dixie portion, it has a much more of a southern drawl. Elongating those vowels a little bit. And saying y'all every sentence. How y'all doing today? Y'all want to go to Waffle House? Come on over, we'll go to Waffle House. It's just like real round in your mouth, and you're just like, hey y'all, how we doing tonight? Um, are you guys going to go down to the game this weekend? I'm so excited. Like Joshua's doing real great this year. Everybody talks really slow, especially compared to New Yorkers. Most New Yorkers are loud. You got to fit your way into a conversation most often times when you're in New York. Vermont's accent is uh, very unique and it's hard to slip into unless you're talking to another person who like grew up farming. But the phrase that I can say in my accent is always, oh sure bud, oh sure. People from California kind of have like, they say like. Colorado doesn't really have a typical accent. Lots of people say that it has no accent, but you'll definitely get called out if you say Colorado. It's Colorado. So I've been told from people in New York that my state has an accent. Some people go Chicago. I don't think we do. There's parts that I can hear like a little bit of a twang and kind of sound like this. Some people in New Mexico have accents, depending on what part of the state you're from. People in the South tend to sound a little bit more like they could be from Texas. Really wide syllables, really kind of drawn out phrases. It's a little sing-songy, like a little bit valley girl almost. I'm from New Mexico and I love eating burritos. You wanna go skiing up on mountain? Pass me those taters. <laughs> I don't know, I mean like there's cowboys, you know, there's horses. I don't know, because I don't feel like I have an accent. I went home a couple of years ago and was watching home videos of my sister and I, and we had to like do a weather forecast as like little kids, and we'd be like, there's a big hurricane coming from the, the left coast, but don't worry because we don't know that it's coming. And people would be like, what are you saying? I can put on the, you gotta park the car and hop the yacht and give the guy a quarter for some chowder. That's a standard Boston accent right there. Any E-R would have an A-H at the end. It's kind of like, Boston, but cooler and a bit more drunk. Like, we gotta go up to Baja, but I get some lobster supper. My mom has this kind of strange half French Canadian, half Boston accent that sounds like peanut characters. Oh, if you're from North Dakota, you've got some long O's. Oh, yeah, you betcha. Yeah, hang on to your R's a little too. It gets a little bit thicker the older you are. Your grandma sounds a little bit like this. Your mom might be a little bit softer. I'm from Wisconsin. Go pack, go. It kind of gets like up here. Go pack. I say big. I have some eggs and a big. The best example of the Wyoming accent I feel like I've ever seen was in Brokeback Mountain. One curve in the road and they missed it. So if you live in Washington state, no one ever says they have an accent. They all think they speak pretty normal, which is kind of true. Just kind of middle of the road, sort of like Delaware itself. But they also kind of have like a country hit kind of thing to them. So they'll say like, Washington, like I'm gonna wash my hands. And you're like, wash? What kind of a word is that? We pronounce our T's as D, so we say like Connecticut instead of Connecticut. I feel like Michigan's typical accent um, is very nasally. Hi. 
like that type of vibe. So if I'm from like Northside Kauai, I'm going to sound something like this. People say that us Marylanders have accents, but I don't think we have an accent. Idaho doesn't have a really distinct accent. There's no accent in Indiana. This might be very biased, but I don't think we, I really don't think we have an accent. I don't hear it, but I get reminded of it when I travel. I mean, I, I think this is normal. It's a perfect neutral Pacific Northwest tone. Sarah Palin does not have a typical Alaska accent. She's not really from there. She grew up in, I don't know, Kansas or something. My husband laughs at me because I say wolf instead of wolf. Our accents are all over the place. The first one that comes to my head is a Latino one. Me voy a coger un cortadito. <laughs> There's the St. Louis accent where we say certain things like quarters and water. Where I'm from, they like to say Haina or Mayan. That shirt over there is Mayan. From Philly, they like to say water and use guys. But in Pittsburgh, instead of use guys, they say yins. What are yins doing? North Carolina is, is it's, it's an interesting accent. It's just got a little bit of a drawl. It's a little lazier. Just very slow pace, very good, very nice. There's Charles in South Carolina, which is more like this. It's more smooth. Might have a daughter named Darcy. And then you got the real squealy, squealy southern accent. And then you just got the very just, hey, how you doing? God bless. You have a good day now. All right. So we watched it again. What do you think? What was the easiest? What was the most difficult? What was the one that called your attention the most? What did you like the most? What did you not like? Teacher, I, I'm not sure about the, the video, but uh, I think they explained that uh, in every state, uh, people have different accents when they speak, but every uh, person says, says that they don't notice if they ha have a different accent, but but other people notice if when you speak that you have a a, a different accent. Uh, the other um, is different in the other in the in the other states. I think. Yeah. But they that's explain true. what is the difference in in in, in every state. Uh, what is the way that people speak? Yeah, that's right. So you might think that you don't have an accent because you're so used to it, but people with a different accent from a different state, a different uh, country will notice your accent because you don't hear it every day, right? So for example, us, uh, when we're speaking in Spanish, we might think that we don't have an accent, but a Mexican person will recognize it right away, our accent, or someone from Costa Rica will recognize it immediately, yes. and we will recognize theirs. Yes, it's, it's the same in Spanish when you listen to the Argentina or yeah. uh, the other country, the South, South America, you notice the different accent when they speak in, in Spanish. Exactly, and they're so used to it, they think they don't have one, but they do, and you can tell. Yep, that's right. That's a Sorry. super great observation. I also saw Byron in the chat asking about the expression y'all. Do you know what y'all mean? It's like for everyone, like all of them, I think, or something like this, like that. Right, exactly. So if you're saying y'all, you're saying you all. It's like saying you guys. Hey guys, you guys. Hey y'all. Hey you all, right? And they tend to do that a lot in the South. They do that a lot. So I'll yeah. also the um, accents in the States depend on how long the British stayed. Did you notice that there are some states like uh, Massachusetts that they talk a little bit more British, almost, that they, they force a little bit more of their, uh, their T's. They're saying Massachusetts, Boston, 
and they talk a little bit like that. That's because the British stayed a little bit longer there and other countries we have more Latino people, more people from France, more people from uh, all the other colonizing countries. I didn't understand anything about Massachusetts. Yeah, it's the <laughs> most, in my opinion, Boston, Boston is a city in the state of Massachusetts. So in my opinion, that is the most difficult accent in the United States. I think that's the most difficult. It is very difficult. I will send you later a video about a girl from Boston it's a very difficult accent. So I agree with Lima. I think it's very difficult, but you can get used to it. Alrighty. So this was a great opportunity to practice. It's good for you. And I just want to remind you to look for any videos when you have the chance um, in English, just so that you can practice. You will probably not understand it at first, but it's good for you to train your ear. Just by listening to conversations in English regularly, hopefully every day, it will be easier for you to talk, it will be easier for you to understand, and you will get a lot of vocabulary. All right, that being said, we can move back to our main screen, which is our platform. I see that we are 19 people now. Before everyone joined, I was just letting everyone know that I know that some people are already doing the final exam, if not completed the final exam, and that's great. Um, if you have any questions before Thursday, because we will work on the final test on Thursday, uh, you can reach out to me via WhatsApp and I will try to help you. Um, otherwise, we will complete the review on Thursday. And today, we will go into our topic of the past. We will review the past and we will do a couple exercises that we have for that. So let's continue with our next video for today, Hi. which is referring to this topic. Hi, we want to go back in time. We will explain how we can refer to it. Don't go and stay for the explanation. Get ready. Referring to time in the past. A point of time in the past. When did World War II take place? During the 1940s. In the 1940s. Over 60 years ago. A period of time in the past. How long were the Beatles together? From 1960 to 1970, for 10 years. A period of time that continues into the present. How long has the United Nations been in existence? Since 1945, since World War II ended, for about the last 60 years. When we want to talk about a point of time in the past, we may use the words in, ago, during. I will give you some examples using a timeline. Rock and roll became popular about 50 years ago. Disco became a craze in 1975. Madonna was on the music scene during the 1990s. A period of time that continues into the present using since and for. The United Nations has existed since 1945. The United Nations has existed for over 60 years. Remember, we use since plus a point of time. Example, since last year, since Tuesday. And we use for plus a length of time. For example, for two weeks, for three hours. A period of time in the past using from two and four. World War I lasted from 1914 to 1918. World War II lasted for four years. All righty. So let's go back a little bit to our sentences and review 
three of the scenarios that we have, right? So we can talk about a point in the past, a specific year, a specific date, a specific month, a specific day even. Um, we can talk a period of time in the past. So from this date until this date, from this month until this month, from this year, from 1960 to 1970, or for 10 years, right? They were together for 10 years. In the period of time that continues into the present. So it started somewhere in the past, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, last year, the last summer, and it still continues until today, right? It's still present today. Otherwise, we can say another expression que ya les voy a mostrar. So let's do a little practice first. Who wants to help me read this section right here? We will do three people. So who wants to read this one? Me. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. A point of time in the past. When did World War II take place? During the 1940s? In the 1940s? Over 60 years ago. Thank you so much, Alexander. So as you can see, we are saying the same thing here. Estamos diciendo lo mismo. During the 1940s, so mm -hmm. the world, the World War II took place during the 1940s. Or World War II took place in the 1940s. World War II took place over 60 years ago. Estamos diciendo exactly the same thing just different expressions. These are three ways we can say it. Any questions with this uh, specific topic, a point of time in the past? We can use during, we can use in, and we can use Teacher. go. Teacher, yes. I have a question. Yes. Uh, in, in which cases can I use circa? I have heard that, that, that expression, circa, C-I-R-C-A. C, I'm sorry, spell that again. C-I-R-C-A. Circa, I have yeah. no idea. I've never heard of that. Let's look for it. Oh, okay. Period of time. Does someone know? Let's look for it. Circa. I have no idea. What does it mean? Circa. Often preceding a date. Built circa 1935. All right, so apparently it means approximately. So close to 1935, approximately 1935, around 1935. I didn't know what that was. So thank you for bringing it up. That's super interesting. Oh, thank you to you. That's awesome. Thank you. I learned a new thing. That's cool. So we have another one, Circa. I guess we could say that well, I mean, I don't want to say circa 1940s because we know that it was in the 1940s, right? But yeah, I mean, approximately World War II took place circa 1940s. That's cool. All right. Learned a new thing. Cool. What about a period of time into the present? Who wants to help me read this one? Can I? Go ahead. Okay, a period of time that continues into the present. How long has the United Nations been in, a, in existence? Since 1945, since World War II ended, for about the last 60 years. 
Thank you so much, Roxana. That's right. So when we have a period of time that continues until today, we just have a starting year, right? Or a starting period. So I've been going to the gym since February and I'm still going. You could say, if you want to give more information, I started, uh, let's say, I've been going to the gym. I have been going to the gym uh, for six months and I plan on going until the end of the year, right? And I plan and continue to go. I plan to stop going maybe next month, right? So we have a start date, but we don't have an end date. Cool. What about a period of time in the past? Who wants to read? Me. Go ahead. Uh, a period of time in the past. How long were the Beatles together? From 1960 to 1970. For 10 years. That's right. Thank you so much, Bonnie. So it was from this date until this date. We have a start and we have an end date. It started in 1960 and it ended in 1970. So we can say from the dates and give the specific time, or we can just say for 10 years, right? How long uh, have you been dating your boyfriend? For a year, right? How long have you had your pet? for five years or um, how long were your parents married, right? From 1999 to uh, 2005, for example. You could also say, otra manera de decirlo, from 1960 until 1970. Hasta 1970, right? Mm -hmm. From 1960 to 1970, from 1960 until 1970. There is not um, a best scenario to use it. There are synonyms. You can use both of them. They're not more formal than the other. You can use both. Okay. Any questions so far? No. No. No questions. All clear? Cool. That's great. So I just want to make one more stop before we go into the exercises. Right. Sorry. Yep. Uh, yep. Just to confirm something. Yeah. Uh, it's signs or things. Or the, the, the word I and Z. Things. Things. That's right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep, since, since 1945. All right. I have a question. Yes, Masi. Yeah. If I say, for example, in a period of time uh, during 10 years, that is incorrect. Yes, that uh, we couldn't say that. We need to say for 10 years, for example. Or for a period of time that continues into the present, we would say, um, what would you, what do you want to say exactly? For example, what's your example? With the, with the same question, uh, how long were the Beatles together? And my answer is for during 10 years. Mm, that, yeah, no. In that case, si diríamos 10 years, for 10 years, right? ¿Por qué no decimos during 10 years? Porque cuando decimos during, estamos diciendo during the 1940s. 1940s es una época, right? So algo puede pasar entre ese tiempo. For 10 years es por, es una cantidad. No es un periodo donde sucede algo, sino es una cantidad. For 10 years and during the 1940s. It's more accepted. Yeah, 
it's more of a grammatical rule. Es más una regla gramática que una de medida. Okay, thank you. Nice. What you could say, lo que sí podríamos decir, en este caso, si queremos usar during, en el ejemplo de los Beatles es during the 1960s, right? Se comprende los 60s, todo el periodo desde el 1960 mm -hmm. hasta el 69. So, during the 1960s, if you wanted to use. Mm -hmm. Cool. Alrighty. So, I just wanted to make a stop here. Quería hacer un, un, un alto aquí para hacer nuevamente la mención de until. You could say that, let's say that hopefully not, hopefully not, but let's say that the United Nations stopped existing mm -hmm. and they stopped last year, right? So you would say the United Nations existed since 1945 and until 2021, right? So we give it a stop and it stops uh, existing in the present. We can give it a stop if we want to. If you want to say uh, a, a, that something existed in a period of time and it had an end date, you could use until as well. So I could have that other example. I have a question. Yes. Oh, yeah. In, in my case, for example, if I talk about that, it, I, maybe just I say the UN existed in 1945, but I don't know why I, you know, maybe I not use the N, but why it's necessary to use the N, because N, N until, do you know they say existed 1945, for example? Mm -hmm. And you add in? Mm -hmm. And until? Until, uh, until uh, to, uh, 2021. Yeah. My, so my you're asking is, why I need to add? Uh -huh. the yes. yes, yes, yes. So why? the United Nations existed in 1945. What and if, if just until I used until, you know, just end. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What happened? Uh -huh. Grammatically, I guess you it's could incorrect. say that. I guess you could. It's just not grammatically correct. No se escucha mal in 1945 until 2021. You could mm -hmm. say it si estuviéramos reduciendo palabras for like a newspaper or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's just not grammatically correct. Porque es como que dijéramos, en español sí lo decimos, ¿verdad? Existió en 1945 hasta, hasta 2021. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In, in English, we would add the preposition, so and until 19, uh, 2021, uh -huh. que es lo que nos llama, like grammatically, we would need to add it. You could say until 2021, Pero realmente si estamos ocupando until solito, usualmente lo ocupamos al inicio. So, until 2021, mm -hmm. the United Nations existed since 1945. Sería otra manera mm -hmm. de decirlo. Ah. Um, basically, it's just because of grammar. We add the and because of grammar. But if we were reducing words for like a newspaper or something very, very casual, you could say it. But it's incorrect, gra grammatically. Gr yeah, grammatically you would need it. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. All righty. All right, cool. And then we will go into the practice of what we have learned. This practice includes a reading. And we have, let's say, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven questions. So, what do we have to do? We have to read the paragraphs and we can, need to complete it with these words. Mm -hmm. These are the words that we are going to be using in 
during, go, since, for, from, and to. And we'll just type the words in the spaces, right? It goes in order. So for the first paragraph and the second paragraph. So we will start by doing this reading. Let's see. For the sake of time, por tiempo, I will read it and you will tell me the word that you think should go in the blank, right? So I will take these words and I'll take them here so that you can easily see them. Those are the words we'll be using. And I'll start reading and stop. So you can tell me the word that we need. Okay. okay. So rock music has been popular in since for in in more than escuche since, escuche in, escuche for. What do you think? In. in. I choose in is correct in. In my exercise. <laughs> All right. Yep. So reviewing the answers for that exercise. Me I don't know if you're aware, but we are right now going over the exercises, making sure that everything's correct, that you have all the best answers. So um, following the previous guidelines, following the previous rules, mm -hmm. what we should use, lo que deberíamos usar, is for. Mm -hmm. Rock music has been popular for more than oh, 15 more. years. Mm -hmm. Lo que deberíamos de usar, right? Mm -hmm. For more than 15 years. Por más de 50 años. Okay. ¿Por qué no decimos mm -hmm. in more than 15 years? Than mm -hmm. 50 years? En más de 50 años? Mm -hmm. ¿Ha sido popular en más de 50 años? ¿O por más de 50 años? Por más. ¿Qué les da más sentido? Por más. That's I'm right. in four, but in the platform is in the corner. Really? Yes. Let's try. I make a mistake for that. Yep. We need to fix that. Es importante. Lo bueno de que nos tengamos en estas. Yeah. All right. You have to write in. in. Yep. All right. So I choose. I choose in. in is correct. You put yep. And we'll in. work on fixing that for you. Vamos a trabajar en que eso esté correcto para ustedes. That should be fixed mañana para que se les corrija mañana. Y vamos a revisar si hay alguna otra que dé un problema similar. Pero para su yes. conocimiento, que es lo más importante, sepan que gramaticalmente lo correcto y según las reglas que acabamos de ver, la respuesta correcta tiene que ser for. So rock music okay, has been okay. popular for more than 15 years. All right. Teacher. Sí? But the, the reason I, I think is about the the things that you use in that in that sentence, right? Have has been. It's yeah. a present perfect. That's right. So if we refer to the video, si volvemos al video y vemos los escenarios que tenemos How here, has been. So we talk about a period of time. It has been going into the present. Comenzó hace 50 años y sigue sucediendo hoy. So it has been going for 50 years, for 10 years, or for 60, uh, for 60 years, 50 years in el ejemplo, uh, for more than 50 years, and it is still happening today, has been, uh, significa que comenzó y sigue siendo, right? Yeah. Or, or maybe, or maybe they talk about for more than uh, 50 years, but right now, no, maybe. 
I don't know. Pero aún así, aún así no podríamos usar. Lo que quiero que se comprenda es que in está incorrecto. No hay ninguna okay, okay. situación en uh -huh, la que uh -huh. en esa oración específicamente in podría ser correcto. Está completamente incorrecto y vamos a corregir okay. la plataforma. So, quiero evitar okay. confusiones con eso. In en ninguna uh -huh. circunstancia no cumple ninguna regla y está incorrecto. Okay. It's a mistake okay. in the platform. Es un error de la plataforma, sí. Y eso fácilmente lo corregimos y I'll make sure que that's fixed today para que no cause that for her. Pero lo correcto sería for her. For. Yes. Ok, perfecto. All right. Y la razón que es for es por eso, porque es un periodo de tiempo que eh, es algo que comenzó en el pasado y has been. Eso significa que sí sigue sucediendo. El mismo tense that's being used mm -hmm. nos hace entender que has been popular. Ok, ok. Com comenzó and it still is. Ok, perfecto. Thank you very much. All right. So sorry about that. Eh, desconocía de ese error ahorita, pero thank you for bringing it up. Y para mí lo importante es que sepan por qué y mm -hmm. cuál es lo correcto. Right. Ok. okay. All righty. Mm -hmm. And so then, the Beatles were a well-known English band. In the case, during the 1960s. During. 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 Uh, because it's, a, it's about the, the specific time, but not a specific time, it's in, in the 60s. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. During the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Or, if you ask me, una uh -huh. alternativa que podríamos ocupar es in the 1960s. Have you heard cómo se usa también in the 60s, in the 90s? Uh -huh. We could also say that. We'll use during for this example. Okay. They perform together. They perform together. For, for for 14 for, years. For 14 years. For. Uh huh. Uh huh. For 10 years. 1960. For 10 years. No. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then we have the period of time. We have 1960 and 1970. Years. What are the uh -huh. words that we need to use? For 14 years. From 1960 From 1960. to 1960. 1960. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that's right. From 1960 to 1970. Right? Porque recordemos que estas son las palabras que estamos We could also say, yo también les doy otras alternativas, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Algunos ejercicios en que la plataforma nos da varias opciones para responder. Esto es que nos da solo una. Como les digo, we are working on having all the possible answers. Todas las respuestas posibles para que sea, haya menos confusión. Eh, puede ser for, uh, I'm sorry, from 1960 to 1970. Y también podría mm -hmm. ser since 1960 until 1970, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You could say that. Uh -huh. All right. In 2003, the Beatles released another album, okay. even though two of the original members had already died. The album was recorded in a specific in, time. In a specific in, time. In 1969. Okay. In a specific year, that's right. Nearly 40 years ago. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 40 ago. years ago. That's yeah. right. Now for the second paragraph. 2003, the United States launched two Mars exploration spacecraft. What's the first word? In. 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 Yes, in. In 2003. In that specific year that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their mission, which lasted four, 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 four more than four. a year. Uh-huh. Again, four more. 
for more than a year mm -hmm. was to gather information about the rocks, soil, mm -hmm. and atmosphere on Mars using rovers called Spirit and Opportunity. The rovers functioned longer than anyone expected. Scientists thought they would last for, for, mm -hmm. for only for, four months. Um, months. Months. Sorry. Only four months. months. Mm -hmm. Este es un ejemplo como los que decía Alexander. Eh, we could say scientists mm -hmm. thought they would last only four months without mm -hmm. the four, right? Mm -hmm. Podríamos quitarlo, podríamos omitirlo, right? Lo uh -huh. ideal es usarlo, pero se puede omitir. Okay. okay. Scientists thought they would last for only four months on Mars. That time, they have sent back thousands of live pictures of the surface of Mars. During. During. Since during that time, you 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 told since <laughs> or no? Mm -hmm. You told, you I, would you read? Would you read? You you said since that time <laughs> or no? Yes, yeah, since. Uh -huh. Since the time during that time. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think mm -hmm. it's since. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's use since. Time. And let's review. There we go. So I would say we uh -huh. could use during and we could use since. I think mm -hmm. they would both be correct because during that time, durante ese mm -hmm. tiempo, yeah. they sent, right? No, you know what? You're right. Porque they have sent, so they're still sending. So yeah, it's since since that time. Yep, uh -huh. that's right. They are uh -huh. still sending pictures. And... Uh -huh. Tomorrow, check. Because in, right now, it's in. Yeah. But it's incorrect. Okay. Yep. So this one okay. we will leave blank porque tenemos que correr en la plataforma. Okay. Let's see. I see people were. Oh, the answer is in the chat. Okay, that's good. Awesome. All righty. The next exercise that we have is for vocabulary. So we need to match the word with the best example. So mm -hmm. we can do all of these words. Mm -hmm. Do you know all of the words? Is there a word that you don't know? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. Uh, the second one. Assassination. Assassination is an assassinato. Achievement. Achievement. What is an achievement? Who knows? Logro. Logros. That's right. Mm -hmm. Something that you accomplish. Mm -hmm. What else? We all know what an epidemic is by now, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Got to be used to it. Mm -hmm. Discovery. Discovery. Discovery kids. Uh -huh. Discovery, Discovery kids. channel. Discovery yeah. channel. <laughs> and the disaster. Achievement. It was, As it was disaster. What? It's disaster. The first disaster. one is disaster. Yes, the first one is disaster. And it was disaster. All right. Mm -hmm. What about the cellular telephone being developed in Sweden 25 years ago? In invention. Invention. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. four planes being hijacked Ooh. in the United States on 9 11. Terrorist act. Yeah. Terrorist yeah. act. 2003, a dinosaur with feathers and four wings was found in China. Discovery. Since the late 1970s, HIV has infected about 58 million people. Uh, yep. Coronavirus. Coronavirus, <laughs> yeah. The US President John F. Kennedy was shot to death in 1963. Assassination. Assassination. And finally, in 1953, 
Sir Edmund Hillary and the Sherpa Tensei of Norway were the first yeah. to reach the summit of Mount Everest. You are absolutely right. Yes. Right on time. It is 9 mm -hmm. p.m. All right, guys. So, vamos a corregir este ejercicio anterior, pero si sí era bien importante para mí que ustedes supieran por qué for es la respuesta correcta. Okay. Um, if someone still has any questions on why we need to use for, o cualquier otro problema que se les presente con un ejercicio así que saben que está correcto, please let me know over to WhatsApp and I can help you. And I okay, okay. Tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.